After studying this module, you shall be able to know longitudinal and sequential method. You will be able to learn types of longitudinal and sequential study. You will be able to identify complicating factors in longitudinal study and evaluate the challenges in longitudinal study. You can also analyze situations in which longitudinal and sequential method can be used. In order to assess whether an exposure is associated with a particular outcome or not, we basically use two methods, first experimental and other observational method. The experimental method to great extent depends upon the laboratory setting and the preferred method of the clinicians. In the experimental method, the researchers study the impact of various factors they can study. For example, the researcher may take a group of pigeon and divide them into two groups, control and experimental group and then vary factors in the experimental group and compare the results of the treated and untreated group to arrive at a conclusion. However, there is a limitation to the number of experimental studies which can be carried on human being due to ethical reasons. Many epidemiological studies come in this category and it is very hard for epidemiologists to conduct experiment. They usually limited themselves to the observation of the occurrence of the disease in people who are divided into two different groups. For instance, if we can follow a people over a time period who smokes, we can find out that likelihood of their getting cancer. These studies are observational because the role to the investigator is to merely observe who is exposed and who is not and what is the outcome of such exposures. However, observational studies have their own set of problems. Chief among them being and being the observed group may differ in characteristics. Thus people who smoke does not only differ in their smoking habits but also in other lifestyle characteristics such as health status, job satisfaction, socioeconomic background, alcohol habit and many other factors. The presence of these large number of confounding variables make it difficult to investigate the role of specific exposure in the development of the outcome. Despite this limitation, observational methods are used to answer large variety of questions. Have you ever wondered how our cognitive and mental capabilities change over a lifespan? What we gain as we move from childhood to being an adult and what is lost as we move from being adult to and elderly or what is the impact of a trauma in the long term caused by events such as war, earthquake or other nature calamities or what would be the impact of the new trend like social media on the mental capabilities of the individuals. All these and many other fascinating questions can be answered by the use of longitudinal research method. Longitudinal methods Definition Observation method consists of several important methods and one of them being the longitudinal method. In the longitudinal research method, the researcher measures a group of subjects in order to observe the passage of time. In other words, data is gathered to the, of the same subject over a period of time. Longitudinal research method is confounded by extraneous events that occur during the study and they may not generalize over time, for example. A researcher would like to study the development of special capability in the children by testing them yearly from age 10 to 15. Longitudinal research is a type of correlational research. A longitudinal study is basically a correlational research which follows one group of individuals over a long period of time, perhaps decades. Correlational unlike causational research does not establish cause effect but only a relationship between two factors or characteristics. One of the prerequests for a research to be called longitudinal is that the research must evaluate the subject at least at minimum of two different time periods so that they can be compared. Therefore, it is common in longitudinal research to meet the participant of the study on a regular basis. The interval between the meetings, the participants, however, may vary from research to research. Longitudinal method has certain advantages. These are 
First, in a longitudinal study, the subject variable remain constant between the condition as a result change in time are not confounded by cohort effect. Longitudinal method in comparison to other observation methods permits the formulation of cause-effect relationship with more certainty. Like other studies, the problem of sample non-equivalence is avoided when we make use of longitudinal research method. If we are interested in investigating growth and increment patterns over a period of time, we make use of longitudinal research method. Longitudinal studies measure change in outcome exposure at the individual level. Also, they provide opportunity to observe individual pattern of change. A chief feature of a longitudinal study is that incident events are recorded as a result any new occurrence in the environment of the participant is recorded and the timing of this new occurrence can be then correlated with any change in the participant's environment. Like advantage, it also has certain disadvantages. Longitudinal research study may be confounded with many extraneous variables that the subject might experience during the entire time period. Longitudinal study locks researchers into an earlier design and theory and it is very difficult to make any changes in them. Longitudinal research study is very expensive and time consuming and it, the, co the source of expenditure stops midway the whole research efforts goes wasted. Unlike the experimental design, it is a method the researcher cannot control the environment of the subject between the two testing phase. Repeated measures are integral part of longitudinal research method. Successive responses may be confounded by carryover effect or response set and the results may be misleading because of death or because of dropout during the study. It also carries with it the risk of being biased if the participants stop following or due to incomplete follow-up. Complicating factors in the longitudinal study. A good anal analysis of the longitudinal data require understanding the various complicating factors which are very much the part of any longitudinal study and the fact that much of the studies are conducted not or the primary data but rather secondary or longitudinal data provides an additional reason for being aware of the complicating factors and a neglect of these factors would lead to wrong inferences drawn with statistic and that would have repercussion for the application of these studies. These complicating factors include social psychodynamics, causal relationships, measurement error, changes in conducting survey, problems of attrition, panel conditioning, etc. The unit of analysis in a longitudinal survey. In all kind of longitudinal surveys, the unit of analysis is the individual and not the family or the household. The reason we take individual as the unit of analysis is simple. Defining family or for that matter a household for research purpose is complicated. Moreover, defining individual as a unit help us to create less complexity for the researchers to follow over a period of time. It is very common for a new household and families to come in existence and for also for the relationship dynamics within a family to change in a very short span of time and these dynamics may lead to a breakdown of the family unit. As a result, we prefer individual unit in longitudinal study as the concept of individual is far more stable. However, one should not infer from its longitudinal survey could not provide information about household or families. The individual, the family or the household, any of these three can be simple sampling unit in a longitudinal study. The chief concern for a researcher using the longitudinal method is how to approach any of these units. Three kind of longitudinal surveys. In a longitudinal research method, measures are taken on a repeated occasion over a period of time on a fixed set of variables for the cohort under investigation. And there are different types of methods for such repeated measures. These methods include retrospective, panel and recording linkage methods. Retrospective survey. In retrospective survey, we the participants are interviewed only once and they are asking to narrate their past. Retrospective methods are known for their simplicity and cheapness because this method makes the information available immediately and the participants are also interviewed only once. A good example of this approach is employment survey, panel survey. 
A sample of people are taken, they are interviewed and they are followed over a period of time and data is collected in a sequence. Such method is popularly known as panel survey. Panel survey is of two main types. First, there is a single panel for the indefinite life and second are multiple overlapping panels for fixed life. Both these kind of surveys may differ in number of interviews and the time interval between interviews. The second distinction we can make between the panel survey is, of, is by considering the unit of analysis, whether the focus is on the individual or the household or the family unit. An example of this kind of approach includes survey of Indian household. Record linkage. Interviews are not only the way to collect longitudinal data. Researchers can collect wide variety of data from personal records of the participants by linking their personal records which are initially gathered for various official purposes. This data may include data resources such as the population census, your income tax return form or the pension you receive from the government. Longitudinal data set of this nature has several advantage over the interviewer based method. Firstly, they have enormous sample size which means analysis of a subgroup of interest can be taken out and sampling error can be minimized. Secondly, as we don't make use of interviews, there is no respondent burden in terms of recalling or reporting errors. However, it also has its sets of limitations such as the linkage may be impossible because of the confidentiality of original data. Second, problem with this kind of approach is that only concurrent information is available. Data for several years before the intervention is hard to obtain as it may not be recorded. A good example of this kind of approach includes a recent conducted population census. Sequential study Cross-sectional and longitudinal methods are considered important method made use by a development scientist. However, they can be at times used as a part of sequence study when we make cross-section method as a part of sequence study. We make use of two cross-sectional sequence of the same age group conducted two or more than two times. The cross-sectional sequence consists of two or more cross-sectional studies within the same age group conducted at two or more times. For example, we may take age group between 25 and 75 in 2001 and then repeat the same study in 2015 with a new set of participants but in the same age group that is 25 to 75. The result from these two studies can be then either provide confirmation of our findings or may provide new insights which allow conducting better studies in future. On the other hand, we can also make use of longitudinal method as a part of sequence study. We make use of two longitudinal studies with different cohort but with similar time frame. For example, we may take an elderly population of 60 years in 2015 planning to assess the psychological profile of these individuals until they reach the age of 75 in 2030. If this study were conducted alone, it would be the normal longitudinal method. But if in 2030 we take new cohort of elderly people of age 60 years and assess them till the age of 75 years, which they will reach in 2045, we get a sequence of longitudinal study with two simple longitudinal cohorts. And in a longitudinal sequence of this kind, we measure the individuals from two different cohorts on repeated occasion. Now, if you compare the core cross-sectional sequence study and longitudinal sequence study, you will find that longitudinal sequence confer two advantages. Longitudinal sequence method allow measuring of intra-individual changes and inter-individual change differences in the rate of change, both of which cannot be obtained through cross-sectional study. In a longitudinal or cross-sectional design, usually we have two factors confounded. Sashi proposed that sequential research design could disentangle the effect of all three factors, age, cohort and time lag comparison. Sequential design have the disadvantage. As they take considerable time and effort, the other main disadvantage being it is not clear that sequential strategies guarantee an unequivocal interpretation of the factors in aging research. However, the sequential design demonstrate the confounded factors to the attention of the research investigator. The cohort sequential study, the cross-sectional study and the long sequential study collectively known as three sequential study along with general development model were given by Sashi. These studies are the best perceived as data analysis studies rather than data collection study. 
cohort sequential study. It calls for simultaneous cross-sectional and longitudinal studies. The two longitudinal studies are conducted on different cohorts. The cohort sequential study designs separate age and cohort effects. However, the time of measurement is not isolated. Hence, this design is best when the time of measurement effect is trivial in a research. Development scientists were interested in differentiating intra-individual changes from inter-individual differences in the development process consistently make use of cohort sequential study. In a comparison to a single longitudinal study or a cross-sectional study, a cohort study provides greater external validity because this kind of study keeps a check whether the age function is consistent over successive cohorts. Irreversible decrement model of aging states that human beings reach a maximal level of functioning at some point in adulthood and from there on starts a process of irreversible decrement. This model is especially true for those variables in which performance is based on the functioning of peripheral sensory functions and psychomotor speed. Both of these variables has shown to decline with age. The development scientists best verify the hypothesis emanating from this paradigm by making use of cohort study. Two cohort studies for two different age levels are pre-request for a cohort study. The other important point to keep in mind with regard to cohort study is that it requires three types of measurement. An assumption which underlies the cohort study is that the time measurement that, could, that we conduct have no effect on behavioral variables. However, this does not mean that this kind of study are entirely unaffected. Time period effect may pose a severe challenge. Similarly, difference in instrumentation may dilute internal validity. For example, if cohort of people who saw India playing cricket World Cup were part of the study, then the variables such as the mood of the cohort would depend upon whether the measure of the variable took place before or after the event. On the other hand, there would be variable that would be totally unaffected by the period effect accelerated longitudinal study. An alternative cohort sequential study created by Bell 1953 is called accelerated longitudinal design. The Bell's accelerated longitudinal study used different data than used in Sashay cohort study. For instance, when we make use of Bell's accelerated longitudinal study, we collect data on each time point in a specific cohort and not at a very age which allows incorporation of missing data in the study. Whereas compare it with cohort study of Sashwe where we make use of three different time points along with it we also use information of two ages for two cohorts. In Bell's cohort accelerated design we work on the assumption that there is no cohort differences and the information obtained from the cohort is linked to extended development trajectories. This study allows us as researchers to test the convergence of the cohort's development trajectories and on testing it we will find out that such points would be stronger for cohorts with overlapping time period. On a comparatively analysis we find that Bell's accelerated design data corresponds to cross-sectional study data. Time sequential study. This design calls for two or more cross-sectional comparison at two or more time measurement. This design isolates time and age effects, but cohorts effects cannot be isolated. So this design is best when the cohort effects are trivial in research. Two age level at least two times measurement in the pre-request of time sequential study. Let's take an example to understand the time sequence study. In a time sequential strategy, we compare at least two age level at a minimum of two times of measurement. For example, a sample of 25 years of old and a sample of 55 years old were taken in 1980. A new independent sample of 25 years old and 55 years old were taken in 2010. In contrast to the other strategies that make use of repeated measure design, this strategy bring into use of all independent samples. In other words, 1960 cohort is assessed in both 1980 and 2010. The data are taken from two different samples from the cohort. Is the difference between 25 years old and 55 years old may be same in 2010 as it was in 1980 or it may have widened or narrowed depending upon the variable under examination. For example, difference between 25 years old and 55 years old in the amount of time spent in interpersonal relationship is likely to be much greater in 2010 than it was in 1980. 
while the difference between 25 years old and 2055 years old in the test of recall of English words from our list may be same in 2010 as it was in 1980. Psychological variables like intelligence and other tests which assess the speed of response it is advisable to make use of time sequence strategy researcher can also benefit from time sequence study in the form of its ability to separate the age difference from time measurement differences cross-sectional study there are two conditions which make the use of cross-sectional study imperative these conditions include the independence of variable and non-independence of variable measurements for example, one may want to investigate the difference in religious tolerance of current in 2005 versus religious tolerance of current in 2015. In a simple cross-sectional study, we collect data from two or more current at two times of measurements. Cross-sectional and longitudinal comparisons are integral features of cross-sectional study. This study isolates the effect of time and current, but the effect of age is not. The cross-sectional part in the study confound age and current while the longitudinal part confound age and time of measurement. This study is useful if the main concern in the research is separating the effect of current and the time of measurement. Summary Exposure associated with an outcome is found out using either experimental or observational methods. Longitudinal study is one of the main observational method in this method. A researcher measure a group of participants over a period of time to find out the outcome of interest. Like other observation method, the longitudinal method also has its advantage and disadvantage. The chief advantages being subject remaining same, sample non-equivalence etc. The chief disadvantage being research gets confounded with many extraneous variable and researchers get locked in research and design. A good understanding of longitudinal data also requires us to become aware of the complicating factors. The unit of analysis in the longitudinal study is the individual and we make use of different types of surveys to study this unit. The different types of surveys include panel survey, record linkage and retrospective survey. Other important research methods include the use of sequential study in the post basic sense. The sequence study make use of the research methods like cross-sectional longitudinal and current method. It is not the method itself but the sequence in which these methods are applied are what get prominence. The chief advantage of this method being it allow us to examine certain situations and effect which cannot be done using any of the, these methods alone.